Hello everyone. Today I'm going to tell you all you need to know for a beginner about bromeliads. Bromeliads also known as the pineapple family have traveled the world for a long time now. Bromeliads are still found growing in the wild throughout Central and South America, each one more beautiful than the next. Altogether, there are more than 2800 species. It is believed that bromeliads first existed in Cretaceous era around 65 million years ago. Fossils have been dated at 30 million years ago, thus confirming their reputation as some of the original inhabitants of the planet. Incas, Aztecs and Mayans used every part of the plant for food, shelter, fiber, and ceremonies. It is interesting that the original bromeliad was not so very different from the varieties you find at the florists and town centers today, so you are taking home with you a piece of natural history, all dressed in the latest fashion. Perhaps you picked one up for yourself, or received one as a gift. Either way, it is important to know how to care for these fascinating plants, so they may provide enjoyment for years to come. Soil, unlike other plants, most bromeliads take in nutrients and water through their leaves and or central tank instead of their root systems. Because of their natural habitat, bromeliad roots are used to sudden bouts of intense rain followed by a drying out period. Therefore, light and airy, fast draining potting soil is required. Lighting. Light requirements vary depending on the type of bromeliad you are caring for. As a general rule of thumb, if your bromeliad features soft flexible spineless leaves, they will most likely enjoy lower light levels. Bromeliads with stiff, hard leaves will prefer bright, indirect light. Temperature. Bromeliads are fairly tolerant of a wide variation of temperatures. Most bromeliads prefer temperatures between 15.5 degrees Celsius and 26.7 degrees Celsius, but can survive in climates outside this range. Water. A bromeliad is more likely to die from overwatering than underwatering. While their roots enjoy a moist environment, they can't remain soggy. Too much water can cause your bromeliad plant to develop root or crown rot. It is usually sufficient to water your bromeliad once per week. Fertilizer. Most bromeliads do not require fertilization to thrive. There are some varieties, however, that can benefit from regular, light feedings. Bromeliads actively grow in the summer months and can be fertilized at this time if you choose to do so. Repotting. A bromeliad's root system is quite small and most will be happiest when kept in small pots. For reference, young bromeliad plants can be safely potted in a 4-inch container. If you feel that your bromeliad is outgrowing its planter, it is best to repot the plant in the springtime. One of the most common questions is if you can grow bromeliads yourself. With a couple of bromeliads and a little patience, you really can grow your own plants. After flowering, you will notice new little plants, still attached, growing at the base of the original plant. Let them grow until they reach half the size of the original plant. For two weeks, keep pouring water into their calyxes and then remove the baby bromeliads, preferably along with some roots. Put the young bromeliads in their own pots, filled with fresh potting soil. Then leave them undisturbed for a year. They should then be ready to flower. Now here's the trick. Put a ripe apple into the center of the plant. Cover the plant with a plastic bag and close it. Let the apple ripen next to the plant for another 3 weeks. In another 8 to 16 weeks you can see the results. A completely new flower has appeared. The most economically important species in the bromeliad family is the pineapple, Ananus commissus. The crop is grown commercially in the tropics and subtropics worldwide for fresh sale, canning, or juice production. The fruit offers a good source of vitamins A and B. Various species of other bromeliads including the pineapple are used to produce fibers from the leaves. Spanish moss, Telangiceros nereides is used in the upholstery industry as a substitute for horsehair. Many species are grown as ornamentals for temperate region houseplants, 